Hey, what's up guys? Wolfgore here. So, I am at work right now. I'm on my lunch break and uh, I thought it might be fun to kind of walk around and show you guys a little bit of what I do for a living when I'm not on YouTube. You've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know? Just there. Um, so I am an electrician and I am a uh, a private sort of residential electrician. I'm not union. I don't really do a lot of commercial work. So most of what I do is building houses for people. And uh, I don't meet... I know several electricians uh, that are my age, but they're all union guys and they just do like residential or uh, commercial work. I do residential work. So they build like Costco's and parking garages and, you know, huge skyscrapers and shit. So, you know, uh, there's not really a whole lot of people my age that are still doing residential work. It's kind of a problem in the industry. I mean, it's good for me because uh, I can make more money in the long run. But anyways, yeah, so I thought it might be kind of fun to just walk around with you guys and kind of show you what I do. And uh, yeah, thought you might enjoy it. So this that you can see behind me is a barn that I am building. Um, it's a little different than a standard barn. Uh, just because the owners are very well off and they're making it like super nice. So generally a barn would only have, you know, bare minimum lighting and, and whatnot. But like this, this has like a nice bathroom and like a shower and a kitchen and there's like a bidet in the bathroom. So there's, there's a lot of wiring in this place. But I'm especially proud of this particular job uh, because I've done it essentially entirely on my own. Uh, I have a partner that I typically work with, so I end up generally doing about half of the the wiring. But this job I've done pretty much entirely on my own. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty proud of that. This is the panel right here. So uh, there's gonna be some big ass wires that come in and feed the power in from, you know, the company that provides the electrical. And uh, then what we do Hang on, I'm gonna flip the camera around. So we will have power coming into the panel, right? And then that power goes to these buses right here. So we'll have power coming into these and then that makes this live with power because it's connected to those buses. And then we'll plug circuit breakers in all down the line on both sides. And then all of these, these are all of our home runs. So each one of these feeds power to a circuit somewhere around the barn. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of circuits in this barn. So this is not a standard barn. And this is not Romex either. Most jobs we do are in Romex. So it's wire with sort of like a plastic rubber coating around it. I'm sure you've seen it somewhere before. This is called MC cable. So it's actually wrapped in this metal casing. Come on, camera, focus. And uh, it's a lot, a lot slower to work with, a lot harder to work with, but I kind of enjoy it because you really have to think about what you're doing. You don't just slap it in like Romex. I mean, Romex takes a lot of effort, but uh, MC cable is kind of a challenge to work with. This is kind of what it looks like on the inside. This is a bigger MC cable. This is six gauge wire for the RV plug so that they can hook up their RV to the barn power. Um, but most of it is more like this size. It's a lot easier to work with. But yeah, I, uh, I have to bring in all what we call these are home runs to the panel, and then they distribute out throughout the barn. And uh, some of them go to lighting circuits, like over here, well, this is actually a plug circuit. So this connects all the plugs you know, it goes like from here, over to there, over to there, over to there. And then all of these will have, you know, standard plug receptacles that, you know, you plug shit into. And uh, there's lighting up there. So every single thing when you're working with MC cable has to have one of these metal boxes. And they take, you know, effort to install. And then to hook up a piece of MC cable to a box, you have to use these special connectors. I have one in my pouch right here. So you have to like punch out one of these knockouts right here and then plug in one of these connectors and screw on the lock nut. And then you 
drop the MC cable in the top and tighten it. And it, it takes effort, you know? It's a very slow process, but I enjoy working with MC cable. And uh, yeah, I've been working up on this scaffolding a lot. Uh, as you can see, these are very high ceilings. I think it's like 19 or 20 feet. That's our 14 foot ladder over there. So it's very uncomfortable up there. Like now that I've been on the job for a few weeks, I'm totally comfortable up there. But at first it was like, oh, fuck this. And uh, yeah, it's been such a pain because when we have to get wires from the panel over there, let me step to the side of the panel right there, over to this side of the barn, which is like a lot of shit has to come over here, obviously, because this is half of the barn and all the machine stuff is going over here. We have to bring MC cable up, over, up, over, down, over, and over to wherever it's going over here. But MC cable, it's heavy, you know, it's metal wiring. So it's like a super huge pain in the ass to try and pull it around through here. Like it takes for freaking ever. And sorry about that sound. The stupid tarp is constantly being blown in the wind. We had to put this up because it was like a giant wind tunnel in here before we did. And uh, it was so damn cold because it's the middle of February. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I have to listen to that slapping around all day like a fucking sail. And yeah, so this is what I've been working on for work. And uh, <laughs> it's been good been good I'm almost done uh, pulling in all the wire so I drilled this whole place myself well I'd say about did about 95% of the drilling myself so every piece of wire that's going through a piece of wood has to be drilled and it you know it takes for fucking ever this is the drill I use right here this is called a whole hog and it's a big heavy fucking drill and uh, this is the bit we've been using for most of it. This is an inch and a half auger bit, which is huge. And this thing has enough torque to break your arm or your wrist. So it's, uh, it's interesting to use. So this is, you know, a standard DeWalt drill. Sorry, I can't get a good angle. Uh, this, needless to say, is a lot more intense than drilling a hole with a standard drill. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've been getting comfortable with the whole hog on this job because typically I don't do most of the drilling just a little of it And yeah, I've had to drill all the wires, you know, I mean this is Just looking at all these holes. I've had to drill right here. You know, that's like 2% of all the holes I've drilled right there, and that's a lot of fucking holes. I've probably spent 10 hours combined just drilling on this job, and you got to pull in all the wire Like this and then you gotta bring the wire. Obviously I need to thread it through the holes, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And then it'll go to a box like this for switches. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably not doing a great job of explaining electrical work, but I think you guys might enjoy just kind of looking at it, seeing what it's like. Those are cans. When you see flush lights in your ceiling, that's what's actually behind the lighting. They call me the can man because I put up so many cans. There's only two cans on this job, which is unusual. Usually there's like dozens, maybe even a hundred on some big jobs. But uh, yeah, that's kind of a little taste of what I do for a living. I actually really enjoy my job. It's uh, will you shut the fuck up, stupid tart? That thing is so annoying, just all day. Just like, geez, man, hush. But yeah, this is what I do for a living, guys. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, if you're a young person and you're not sure what you want to do for a living, consider being an electrician. It's actually, uh, it pays good, especially once you get uh, your apprenticeship done. And uh, it's really enjoyable work, working with your hands. But uh, the bad thing about working with MC cable is your hands get covered in aluminum oxide. So I have like permanently stained gray hands <laughs> for the past couple weeks, but that's fine. I think girls are into guys with strong hands, so. <laughs> Oh, I thought of something. Um, so, Twitch. Twitch is going great. Uh, special shout out to Batushis. Batushis. I'm still working on your name, brother. I'm so sorry. Uh, Batushis and Jeebus for the donations on Twitch. $25 and $40. Holy shit, man. Feels good to actually be making money live streaming. 
I have made more in the past two weeks on Twitch than I've made in three years on YouTube. I checked, I've still only made $21 in ad revenue on YouTube. And that's with like 200,000 views. Feels bad, man. But feels really good that I'm actually making tw money on Twitch. I definitely think we made the, the right move by going over there. I can't talk. Um, but uh, with those donations, I just wanted to let you guys know that I am putting that money back into the channel. I'm not just taking that and, you know, blowing it on vape juice. Um, well, I am actually vaping again, but that's tangential. I'm going to grab my vape right now. But I am putting that money back into the channel in the form of a new condenser mic. I have been using a cheap, shitty condenser mic since I got started in live streaming. I bought it for like $25 on Amazon, and the sound quality is pretty trash. I mean, it works if you're not like a sound person, you probably haven't even noticed. But I got like a $100 condenser mic, uh, an AT2020. It's not, you know, the best in the world, but it's gonna be significantly nicer than, uh, than what I've been working with up until now. So I think that's something we can all appreciate hearing uh, better, better audio quality, you know? What the hell? And uh, I got notifications working for the PS4 on Twitch. Uh, and basically I just have to cast the, uh, the scene from my, you know, screen on my TV and from my PS4 over to my PC, and then I can pick that up using OBS. And so everything's gonna be on my PC now, in essence, like I'll still be playing on my PS4, but I'll be on my PC. Uh, so I'll be using this new mic 100% of the time, and we don't have to look at the ugly orange PS4 camera anymore. So, you know, nice bonus there. Um, and, and there was one other thing I wanted to tell you guys about. I made uh, my first emote for Twitch. It is a smooth gore emote. If you were at the part one of the Guns Only New Game Plus 99 Bloodborne playthrough on Friday, you will know all about smooth gore. I was uh, failing pretty hard there and smooth gore kind of became a meme. So I made a really awesome emote. Uh, that I think you guys are gonna love and get a lot of enjoyment out of. I'll have a picture right here of what I made the emote out of, and obviously it'll be cut out and have a clear background, so it's just the face and the hand, not, not a, it won't have a background to it. Like a proper Twitch emote should, it should always be a PNG with an alpha channel. Only a few of you understand what I'm talking about, but, so that's a thing, and I know I only have one subscriber thus far, Daedra6666, thank you so much for being my subscriber on Twitch. You are currently the only person who will be able to use the emote, but if you see this, spam the fuck out of it, you have my permission, and I hope a lot of you other guys decide to subscribe too. It costs like five bucks, but I get 250 out of that, so you're actually helping to support me, and like with the condenser mic, I'm going to be putting that money back into the channel, making things better for all of us. And yeah, so please subscribe on Twitch. Uh, do it live so I can see the notifications and get all excited and you'll get your custom uh, GIF. And then you can spam the fuck out of Smooth Gore. And once I get Twitch partner, we will unlock additional emotes and I shall make more because it was a lot of fun making the first one. So yeah. I think that's finally everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Subscribe on Twitch. I love your faces. Like the video if you enjoyed some behind the scenes. And uh, subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you guys all on Twitch. And I think I'm actually going to be trying to stream a lot more this month. I kind of got it in my head to try and stream every day except for Sundays for 30 days and do kind of a sort of 30 day challenge out of that. I've done it for a week before and it actually went very well. Um, I keep trying to end the video and then thinking of other things to talk about. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing like a 30 day try and stream every day challenge other than Sundays because Sunday is girls day with my roomies. And uh, so hopefully that goes well. I'm not gonna burn myself out doing this. This is something that I actually feel like doing. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, Streams usually start around 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so I'll see you all there. I'll see you all for part two of the Bloodborne Guns Only playthrough on Friday. And I've got to end this video because it's getting too long. I love your faces, Beard Heart.
and I will see you all soon.